Today we're going to be making some agate slice coasters. Aren't these gorgeous? All it takes is a lot of glitter, some resin, and a little bit of sparkle. Aren't they fabulous? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Moon Cusser Art. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on making some agate coasters. So these were done in a mold and you can see they're they're pretty good size. They're about five and a half inches maybe. Um, so good size. It takes about three fluid ounces of resin to make just one. So it does use quite a bit of resin, but they're, you know, very nice sizable pieces and you're not going to get any moisture on your tabletop using these. So I did these yesterday. I'm going to make two more today and uh, they came out really pretty. Let me uh, give you a better look here. There you go. And these are done with the epoxy resin stores general use epoxy. I did that so that I could get some nice details in the resin itself. It's a very fluid-like resin, so the colors move easily. And I used these silicone molds, which are from Let's Resin. And I'm going to use them again today, so let's get started. I'm here on my resin table and I'm batching up six ounces of the Epoxy Resin Store's general use resin. It's really thin and easy to mix. And this is a new product that I just got. This is from Color Art and it's called Bling It. Uh, it's a powder, obviously you can see that, but let me tell you something. This stuff is amazing. I am in love with it. This has a bright sparkle to it. Let me get you zoomed in here. I'm going to stir it in and it mixes really easily into the resin, which I love that. Didn't find any clumping whatsoever. I love that. And it just it's just a tiny bit of resin, but it just blends right in there. So let's uh, get a peek at how that looks on the stick. So check that out. It has like an interference color of that violet in there, but then it's got that sparkle to it. Really fabulous. I'm also using a very inexpensive glitter. I get these at Michael's and it's a small hexagon shape. And then this one I also got at Michael's. This is from Recollections um, and it's an assortment of shredded types of glitter. So they have an interesting shape, a little bit different than the hexa hexagon. And this one, I used a lot of glitter in a very small amount of resin. This is going to become my focal point of the geode, and I wanted it to be pretty intense. I've poured the remaining amounts of my resin, the six ounces, into two separate little paper cups. I love these paper cups. They work really well for controlling your flow of the resin. You can pinch the cup and it's just one of those little um, mouthwash cups that you can pick up at, you know, Walmart or Target, any place like that. So let's start with the center here and we're just going to take from the popsicle stick and put a dab to create that center of the geode here. And I don't want them to be perfectly round. You know, nothing in nature is perfectly round, and you can see by the molds that I'm using here, they're not round, so why would I want my center to be round? I don't. I want it to have a little bit of change, so let's move that around and, you know, fuss with it a little bit. Now here's where the pinch cup comes in really handy. It's, again, a very small amount of resin that I put the bling it into and I can control how much I'm pouring out really nicely. So I just did a little round on that focal point of the glitter for the center, and that's it. Now we're gonna start working around the sides here with that hexagon glitter. And you know what? It looks too weak to me. I did not put enough glitter in there. So after dumping a little bit more glitter into my cup, Let's start 
getting this going a little bit better. You can see once I add that, it's much more intense. So you want to kind of measure out, you know, think about how far you've got to make your line last to go around these molds. And I try to do a thin line so that I can make sure that I have the same amount in each one of these molds. I don't want to have to batch up another round of resin by trying to figure out just like what I did in the beginning there when I started pouring this, I noticed that it wasn't intense enough. So for consistency, you want to have it batched equally and, you know, just take your time, make your thin lines, go around the edge. It's not hard to do it all. If you get a little bit on your edges, don't worry about it. It'll all get cleaned up in the end, but be sure that, again, you have enough that you can complete your circle and if you have a little bit left over in your cup, you can add more for consistency. And, you know, I also like to use up almost every drop of resin that I'm using. So I don't want to waste any of it. All right, finished the rings. So now I'm just going to go around and fill up these spots. Yep, just like that. We're going to add on. You want to keep it close to your wall. That's what's going to really make this bling. And then we can come back to the other one and add a few more spots here and there where it looks like it needs a little bit more as well. Now this part is pretty easy and straightforward. I, again, using my paper cups, and I've got the remainders of the six ounces split out so that I'm getting equal amounts into each one of my molds. That's really important for consistency, and it's, you know, works pretty good. Now, I start to get a drip down the side of my paper cup here, and I know from experience that that's going to be problematic. It doesn't always happen. And uh, I want to really control the flow, so I struggle a little bit. It's, you know, going to just follow the side of the cup, and, you know, it's kind of getting all over the place and messy, messy stuff. Yeah, scrape, try to control it. Nope, still going to run right down the side. It's not where I want my pour spout. So I'm going to stop pouring that one and just kind of, push that with the popsicle stick. I'm very careful not to touch the bottom with my popsicle stick. If you've used silicone molds before, or if you're planning on doing it for the first time, even a popsicle stick can leave marks on your silicone molds. They're shiny on the inside and you don't want to leave scratches. That's what will exactly happen. So be careful when you're doing that. Now this little cup, was nice to me. It poured nicely. So I'm just filling in with the clear. I'm going to push it so that it, it runs all the way right up to the sides of that dark purple glitter. And it's going to flow right out there. Looks good. And then I get my little flame, my lighter. And again, you need to be really careful with silicone molds. Using too much heat is going to damage your mold. It's going to make your resin stick inside that mold. And yeah, you basically ruined your mold. So be really careful. Doesn't take a lot. Again, this is a thin resin, so the bubbles pop. Now I'm going to start coming in with my alcohol inks. I'm using Ranger from Tim Holtz. It's their amethyst color. And Pinata, their Blanco, Blanco white. So you go in first with your color and dripping that right in there. It looks so pretty. You can see how the alcohol ink it's kind of floats on the surface and expands out. And then what you need to do <clears throat> is do your ring in the same fashion in your other mold. It's all about consistency, especially if you're making a set of coasters. You want them to be pretty much uniform. I mean, you know, the beauty of these is they're not exactly the same. 
Now the Blanco Blanco White from Pinata, it's a very heavy white alcohol ink. Uh, the Ranger White doesn't work. Blanco Blanco, it's the bomb. And you need to come right on top of your color and by dropping it on top of the color that you've previously put in there, the white, because it's a heavier pigment, it's gonna drag that other color, the Ranger Amethyst, down. And that's where you start getting some effects. Now I pointed out there that the purple is kinda turning blue, and that's because the white is mixing in with that purple and what it's doing is it's kind of wiping out any of the red tones in there. So, yeah, I got a little bit of the blue color going in there. I'm not crazy about that. It's kind of ruining my color scheme. So once that white is on there, you come back on with some color, drop that over top. Now I want to keep that center. So I'm going to come around with some more of my white, or Sorry about that, not my white, my clear. And see how I follow that ring around the center and I keep moving further and further, pushing it wider. And it just pushes it right back. Do the same with the other one. Again, I'm using two separate cups for my clear so that I can keep my measurement equal. Again, these molds take about three ounces each of resin. So fill that out there, let it expand through, and push those colors back a little bit. There you go. And a little bit more torch. Very quick, very light, just to get any of those bubbles. Easy peasy. All right, and a little bit more of the clear. Again, trying to get preserve that sparkly center. I'm really liking how that blingit is just looking so pretty in there. Lovely. Let's add a little bit more of it. Sometimes, you know, you just can't get enough of a good thing and this stuff is a good thing. Almost forgot I needed to push back my ring. Oops. There we go. Open up the center there. Just like that. Okay. And now we can add another little touch of that bling it. Again, this is the violet sparkle. Love purple. Little swirl on top because, hey, you know, it's pretty. Let's throw a little more on there. Almost out of it. Now this resin has a pretty long work time. I've worked with this resin um, in the past for up to an hour. So it's, uh, again, one of the reasons why it works well in this application is because it's a thin resin and I mixed everything up quickly and started working with it right away. If you want, to, want it to be thicker, you just let it sit a little bit. I wouldn't let a large quantity of it sit in a cup because that's when it's going to cure in your cup. The larger volume you have in your cup, it uh, generates more heat within itself and it'll end up freezing up right in your cup. But small amounts, you can measure them out and if you need it to be thicker, just let it sit in the cup for, you know, 10 minutes and it'll begin to get a thicker consistency. But again, for this application, I wanted it to be thin. Push out our circle on this one. There it goes. I love watching how the alcohol inks react on top of the resin, the swirls and the motion. It's really interesting. I don't know who first started putting these alcohol inks on top of resin, but boy, they really hit something. 
and it's fun. Very interesting details out of this. All right, get the rest of that resin in there. Okay, now I'm going to come in with pinata. Again, I wasn't really happy how the amethyst turned blue on me. So this pinata, it's uh, their blue violet. It's a really dark purple. Beautiful. Now, their purple passion is even darker than this one. But you have to be careful with the pinata colors. They are really strong. You can overpower a piece with these. So I did not give quite as many drops of the pinata color as I had done with the ranger color. Again, I, I don't want it to be so dark, but I do want it to have color in it. And it's got to work with that color of the glitter that I've got down in there. Now I'm going to just use a toothpick. And again, being very careful not to hit the bottom of my silicone mold, I'm just dragging through the edge of that darker purple, that blue violet from Pinata, and mixing that in again to create a detail. It's also because I'm continuously dipping the same head of the toothpick through the color. It's introducing color down through the resin. So just take your time. You know, there's no right or wrong here. Just don't scratch your mold. That's the most important takeaway I can tell you in this. Don't scratch your mold. You'll be so upset. And then the same thing over on this one. Now that I'm happy with the way the alcohol ink is looking in there, I decided I had just a little bit more of this really sparkly glitter. And the pushing of the resin had kind of collapsed my center circle, so I add a little bit more on top there. Just to get that to push out a little bit. And another quick pop with the lighter, getting any bubbles out of there. Just like that. And now I'm going to come in with a toothpick because when I looked at it from the surface, I was looking to see if I had any hair in there or anything like that. And I noticed that some of these pieces of glitter were actually standing up. And I want my surface on the back to be smooth. It's okay if I see a little bit of ridges, but I'm pushing them down into the resin just to make sure. All right, time to put it to bed and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, they're cured for about 23 hours now. There's the ones that I did the other day, and now we're going to pop these out of the molds. You just loosen them around the edges like that and find a spot, get your finger under, and boom, they're out. Looks pretty good. That one's a little more defined than I wanted, but okay. Get this one out, and the molds are clean and ready to use another time. All right, I'm out in the backyard and I've got a little bit of a lip edge from where the resin is up against the side of the silicone mold. And that can be a little bit sharp. So what I like to do is sand that lip edge down just so that it's not quite so sharp. I've placed a piece of 400 grit sandpaper down on my tabletop and I'm just going to work just that edge. And I go all the way around and it's just enough so that it's rounded over just slightly. I'll clean it with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure I've got all the dust off of it and it'll be a much better product in the end. Okay, back inside I've got my isopropyl alcohol and I'm rubbing the back and the edges. Rubbing the back, I did pick up a little bit of the alcohol ink off of the back, but not too much. And I want to get it nice and clean for my next step. So now we want to get a finished edge. 
And I like to use CraftSmart markers. I get them at Michael's. It's an oil-based pen. And I find that the pen works really well, gives me a lot of control and even application, which of course is important to me. So I'm just gonna go right on the edge. I don't wanna put on a silver lip. I only want it on the sides. And you might spot that the paint is not adhering to the glitter that is exposed on that surface, but that's okay because again, it's a geode and you know, geodes have their own little weird imperfections. So I'm okay with it. I don't want it to be, you know, so perfect and uniform. I want it to have its own personality and I'm gonna let that all happen here. Touch up a little bit in there, but these pens work really well. You can get them and by all means get a coupon buy them with a coupon and save yourself a lot of money that way. We'll just go all the way around. I had a little bit of fuzz on the tip there, so I'll clean that off. I'm going to do it on each one of these just in the same manner, really quick and easy. So edges are dry and I am in the process of taping off the back. So this one it's already all done. And in full disclosure, it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> you know, cutting the tape around the edges, it's a lot of detail work. It's tedious. But, you know, I like a clean back, so I'm going to do it on all of them. So here's one that I've already taped off the back. And all I have to do is come in and trim those edges. I cut the tape right to the edge there. You can see the, I think you can see it. Oops, sorry about that. So you can see the edge shows right through the tape there. So I just come along with my razor blade and trim it down. So it's, it's time consuming, definitely. And you know, I just lay out my tape and one more to go. And we're going to be all set with that. So let me finish getting those taped up and I'll see you in a bit. Back at the resin table and the backs of my geodes are all taped off. I'm happy with that. I have made sure that my working surface is level. Very, very important. If it's not level, it's going to flow off of your coasters all to one side, possibly make a mess and you're not going to be happy. So level is very important. I use my leftover yogurt cups. I put a tape donut on there and I just stick it right to the bottom of the geode. Try to be in the center and that holds it up off the tabletop. It allows the resin to flow. If I need to clean underneath with a pop stick, you know, I can swipe underneath there and each one gets its own little stand. I can move them around, get them out of my way if I need to, pick them up if I need to eyeball something. They work pretty good. Handy little trick. All right, so those are all set up. Give myself a little bit of working room there. Okay. And I'm going to be using some resin to do the clear coat. It has a heat resistance of up to 500 degrees. And I have batched up, this is, uh, what did I do here? This is four ounces of resin. So I'm predicting I'm gonna need an, one ounce per top. Again, these are about five and a half inches average size. So I wanna have enough that I can cover and even have a little bit of leftover if I need it. So I'm just going to start by pouring a puddle in the middle. If you watch those puddles, you're going to see that they stay pretty much in the middle. And that's a good sign that your workspace, your tabletop is level. Using the pop stick, I'm just going to bring it right over to the edge. And get that applied on each one of them. Bring it right to that edge. 
And I'm not worried about the sides just yet. I'm going to let the resin sit up a little bit and get thicker. Hit it with a torch to get those bubbles out. Again, these are still soft. It's been only 24 hours for one set and 48 hours for the other. And then I take my glove finger and I dip it right into my cup of resin and I apply it to those sides. Now I let that um, paint for the oil-based paint on the sides dry for about six hours before I tried putting the resin on here. So fingertip works pretty good. Don't want to have a hole in your glove but you can actually get a feel for putting the resin on there. It's kind of difficult to eyeball this. At least I find it hard to do that. I've had a couple of times where I missed just a tiny little spot and boy, it's frustrating. So using your finger, you can really feel it good and make sure that your surface is completely covered. And again, the resin's been thickening up, so I'll pour a little bit more and uh, put on a fresh set of gloves. And then I can get my torch. The um, counterculture art resin is heat resistant, like I said, to 500 degrees. And because it's a clear coat, it is food, food safe and beverage safe. Good night. Good morning. And let's take this cover off. Whoa, look at these things sparkle. Now that's one of the other things that putting a top coat on does for these is it just really creates another layer and richness to the finish. Oh, that is pretty. So let's turn it over. There's my tape donut ring. And you can see, you know, this is why I think you can see. Let's get it on camera there. See those little drips? Those come over the edge. So that's why I like to tape it off. And even if you were to come with a pop stick and scrape that off, now you'd actually be pushing it onto the bottom. So by taping it off, it protects it. Okay? So let's do a little drum roll. And let's see. So because this is Counter Culture's art resin, it's very hard which is why I'm using it. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to warm that up with my heat gun so that I can peel those off. But it's, you know, this has been overnight that um, this is cured. So let's see, this is about uh, 16 hours since I poured it. Um, so definitely want to get that off now. So let me set up to do that. Okay, so I put down this mat and uh, I've taken them off of their stands. And what I'm going to do, I put this mat down because even though this is a really hard resin, it's still so new and the possibility of marking the surface is there. So I want something clean and something that the resin's not going to get stuck onto. And I'm going to start warming that up with my handy-dandy heat gun. So let's make a little bit of room to work. Get those off. And I can just stand my heat gun up. Right, This is the Wagner. And you can just stand it up just like that. And we're gonna turn it on, on just a medium setting. And I'm just gonna wave that over top of the heat. I have a exacto knife if I need it to get through any of these spots. And let's get a clean back.
So I waited for the heat gun to shut down and do its cool down cycle so I could talk to you again, but look at this. Look at this. That's pretty. So I have my resin like I did all the way around, which is now protecting that silver band and a picture perfect clean background or bottom, I guess. And then we're going to put the uh, silicone feet on that. But before I do that, I have a few more to do. So let me get that done and we'll move on to the silicone feet. One of the things I like to do is, again, I'm going for a nice clean back, but I also want a nice uh, edge to it. So when I pull off the tape, there's just a little bit of, you know, the from the resin there. So what I did, because it's difficult to get into some of these little nooks and crannies, I took my nail file and I don't want to scratch the surface. So on an angle, I just went around and rounded off just very quickly. It didn't take long at all, but that just makes sure that there's no sharp edges on the back, okay? So now it's time to put on the silicone feet. These are just clear silicone bumpers and you know, you get them in a pack. And I always put four because that keeps them stable. So again, I have this surface down so I'm not concerned about marking the front. And I'm just gonna place four. I place them wide. Pop those on there. They have a adhesive back to them. And this ensures that when the customer puts those down on their tabletop, it's going to protect their table, but it's not going to ruin the look of my work. So that's it. Four bumpers like that. Now they stay up off the surface slightly and they don't rock. Wonderful. So let me finish that and then we're gonna go outside in the sunshine. Well, the sun gods were with me. It was a gorgeous sunny day and out in the backyard, look at the sparkle on these babies. Woohoo! I am so thrilled with them. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you give it a try. It doesn't take a lot of product to make these. Yes, you have to invest in getting the molds, but they are well worth it. I can use them multiple times. I've used them before and they look like they'll last a long time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so that you get notifications when I put out a new video. And I'm going to link you up with a couple of other spots here to check out things that I've made in the past. Everything that I use today will be in the description box. And don't forget, enjoy creating. Thanks!